brother, and nice to see you again. So, uh, I want to talk about the sin unto death, which is in 1 John uh, 5, verse 16. Um, there seems to be a lot of confusion on this verse, and I came across this really good PDF today that um, explains things really well. And, um, you know, it's a common teaching um, that the sin unto death uh, refers to a believer who is saved and uh, is chastised by God um, and they are sinning to the point to where God just kills them or takes their life away and this is kind of like a chastisement um, and we see this kind of thing happen in scripture with Ananias um, when he lies to the Holy Spirit and instantly uh, is dead and um, 1 Corinthians 11.30, where Paul indicates that partaking of the Lord's Supper unworthily, uh, in verse 27, has been the reason that many among you sleep. And, uh, and maybe a, another verse or two, which has this kind of thing. Um, there are people like Edward P.F. 123, that false teacher who teaches the easy believism gospel, uh, that repentance doesn't mean to turn from sin. Uh, which is a lie, and he, he teaches this. Um, also, Stephen Anderson teaches this. Many, many teach this, that the sin unto death is a believer who is, who, you know, sins to the point where God is sick of them and takes their life. This is false, and so we're going to, we're going to look at this further. Um, so first of all, the main reason that a lot of people hold to this view is because of the word uh, brother. 1 John 5, 16 says, If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So, we see the word brother here, so we instantly think that that refers to a saved person, so the sin unto death cannot mean a spiritual death, because someone who is saved is always saved because of eternal security. So, uh, it is true that someone who is saved uh, cannot lose their salvation. So, um, so we know that uh, death, death can mean physical or spiritual. Okay, so they think in this context, because of the word brother, that death has to mean physical. But what we need to examine here is, does the word brother always have to mean a saved person? And most of the time, yeah, it does. But does it always? No, it doesn't. Okay? Some of the verses that we can look at are 1 John 2, 9, 2, 11, and 3, 15. I want to look at, uh, sec, or, not, or 1 John, yeah. I want to look at 1 John 3, 15. Let's look at 1 John 3.15. And at first, I, at these three verses I read them, and I was like, well, that doesn't really prove that, in this context, that a brother is not a safe person, but it actually does. God opened my understanding, and then I was like, okay, that makes sense. So 1 John 3.15 says, Who, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Okay, so... Here we are saying, uh, we're talking about brothers here, and one of them uh, does not have eternal life. So, therefore, one of them must be a professing brother, and not actually a truly saved individual. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Whosoever hateth his brother, we're talking about brothers here, is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So one of these brothers is not a saved brother. Okay? Um, and then there, there are other verses too. Uh, um, when it's it's not uncommon for the scriptures to speak to professing believers when addressing the church, such as First Corinthians five eleven. So we go to First Corinthians five eleven. First Corinthians 5.11 says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man is that is called a brother, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner, which such a one not to 
know not to eat, okay? So that says if one is called a brother. And then we have 2 Corinthians 11.26 and Galatians 2.4, um, where we're talking about false brethren. So there was a point before they were discovered as false brethren that they must have been accepted as a brother, okay? So, 1 John 5.16, If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, uh, that doesn't mean that this person is saved. It can merely mean that they are just a professing Christian. Okay. The most plausible explanation for the sin which leads to death is that it refers to habitual and continual sinning of a professing brother. Okay. Um, it is granted that physical death of a believer may be in view in 1 Corinthians 11. However, this does not prove that the physical death of a believer is in view in 1 John 5.16. Uh, in addition to the fact that nothing in this part of 1 John indicates that sin leading to death must be understood as sin punished by fatal bodily illness, there is no significant evidence that shows that suggests otherwise. Okay, and a lot of 1 John is talking about uh, the difference between a saved person and a professing saved person. We see that a lot in 1 John. That's what most of it's about. If physical death is being referred to, then life must be physical life. Okay? In 1 John 5, 16, it says, um, in the middle of the verse, He shall ask, and he shall, shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. So if it's physical death, then that must be speaking of physical life. Proponents of the physical death view are faced with the difficulty of explaining why one should pray that God will for, will give the sinning one in 5.16 extended life, extended physical life, when in fact he is committing sin not leading unto premature physical death. So try to figure that one out. <laughs> so... Uh, it is conceded, while all persons are born spiritually dead, they certainly are not confirmed in that state. However, following the Apostles' teaching here, there may come a time prior to their physical death when their condition becomes irreversible, when divine forgiveness is no longer available for them. Matthew 12, 31, and 32, which is speaking of the unpardonable sin. Now, that doesn't mean that 1 John 5, 16 is speaking of the unpardonable sin. It's just comparing the fact of those that there is a certain point where forgiveness... Uh, unto salvation is no longer acceptable. Okay. So, I'll read the conclusion really quick. The Apostle John appears to have in view an unsaved man who professes to be a believer who is actually in need of salvation on the one hand. John refers to a man who is sinning but is not doing so to the point of the impossibility of being granted eternal life. He has not yet come to the place where the possibility of divine forgiveness has been revoked. In such cases, as a result of the intercessory prayer of a brother, God would grant spiritual life. On the other hand, the apostle asserts that if a man does sin to such an extent that repentance and forgiveness is impossible, it would be unto death, spiritual death. Spiritual death in the sense that his condition is irrevocable. Example, Matthew 12, 31, 32. Thus, the sin can be committed by a Christian when a Christian is... This sin, the sin committed by a Christian when Christian is used in the broader sense to include those whose Christianity is merely a matter of profession, but it cannot if Christian means one who has actually been regenerated. It is clear that brother in Scripture normally refers to a saved individual, but John's usage of the term implies that in some cases there will be a difference between what what is professed and what is actually true. Furthermore, experience has vividly illustrated the power of God to regenerate the most reprobate of sinners, and therefore the believer should be careful not to judge the status of another too quickly, Nevertheless, John asserts that the habitual practice of sin does indicate the spiritual state of a man, Galatians 5.21. Consequently, while the believer is to pray for the sinning brother until God reveals otherwise, John reminds him that the uh, if his efficacy of his prayer may not extend to that person, and the believer's confidence should not be diminished thereby. Okay. Um, and people like Edward P.F. 123, those false prophets... Um, you know, they might have another explanation, um, you know, f 
why they should pray to God uh, to give them physical life uh, when they are not sinning the sin that is unto death. But, um, you know, people, you know, Jesus only people have explanations for verses that imply the triune God. Uh, you know, Seventh day Adventists have explanations for verses that imply that hell is eternal punishment. You know, it just comes down to, you know, what is true and what is not true. And you need to study the scriptures and look at these details. Take everything into consideration. Always look at the context. Don't get stuck on a word like brother. And, you know, when brother mostly means a saved person, yeah, we can start off with that understanding. But when we look at the whole context, the context, you know, in a whole of the passage, you know, then we have to consider, you know, maybe it doesn't mean a saved person. And we look at these other verses, like 1 John 3.15, you know, where that implies that a brother uh, can cannot be a saved person. Um, so, always look at the context. This verse is talking about, uh, you know, an apostasy, uh, a person, uh, a point where, you know, a professed believer, you know, has sinned and no longer has the option of actually being saved. So... Thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.